So now I'm going to work with the array commands. The array commands, if you pull this down, this button up here in the modify, there's different types of arrays. There's rectangular, path, and polar. Okay? So the rectangular, imagine that you're having to do a, a set of desks like, or, like that are in this room. So you're going to build one little desk and copy it three times, and then you're going to array it. So you're going to have a certain spacing between desks. You'll have a certain, you know, grouping. So if you have something, and imagine, okay, so you go to um, Home Depot, and all the parking spaces are all painted, right? In civil drawings, you actually have to draw every single line to show them what is being, where the parking lines are going, so everybody knows where they're supposed to park. So can you imagine drawing line after line after line? But there are certain specifications that parking spaces are. They're 20 foot wide, uh, or 10 foot wide, 20 foot deep, and then you can create an array off of a path, or an array um, if, it's, if it's along, yeah, along a, an array path, okay? Circular holes, let's say there's something that needs to have a fitted slot. It's a, a, it's a um, some type of like padding that goes on it and has hurt certain amount of holes, then you might need a uh, polar array. So let me show you an example. I'm going to draw this first circle up here, okay? So I'm just going to draw a circle anywhere on my plan, and that circle has a diameter of, let me change that diameter, to one. All right? Now, I can tell it to, let's say I copy and I bring one over 4.5, okay? Now, if I highlight both of those and I say rectangular array, I can build rows and rows of this. Now, here's what you need to see at the top. There's four columns, three rows. What if I wanted two columns, two rows? Helps if I actually typed in two. Now, the spacing between, let's say I wanted four, all right, and four between the rows, all right. I'm going to delete that. Notice what happened, and this isn't for this one, this is just drawing arrays. Notice what happened, this is one big block. This is what's called associated. If you type in X for explode, it'll convert them back to individual properties. Now I'm gonna go ahead and delete these. I'm going to, and instead of using the button, you can type in array. If you just type in array, then it's gonna be defaulted, I believe, to rectangular. So if I say array, there's an array erect, polar, and path. And I select my object. I hit enter. Right. Now, if I say I want two columns and two rows, or one column, I'm having a hard time with this. It's moving slower than what I'm typing. Two columns, two rows, it should put with a distance of, let's say, four in between, there. It puts my two columns in, okay? I can change it as easily with the number of, just typing in, okay? Now, the other thing is, is notice that the associative, remember how I clicked on it before and it was all one group? If I click on associative and I say no, and then I hit enter, each one of these objects are sitting individuals on their own. I leave the associative until I'm happy with the array because now you can't do anything. Once it's not associated, you can't use the, the column and rows and the space between them. Okay. Now, the rectangular 
ones are really nice when you're working on objects that has to be specifically row to column separation. Okay. Now, let's say I want to do a, and I'm just going to move this over. Let's say I wanted to do a polar array. So I click on polar. What if this was to the four corners, or to the, to the north, to east, south, and west, and I wanted it to array about that center point? First, I'm, I'm going to make sure that I am centered. So if I say I want polar, I want this object to be arrayed about that center point, okay? I can do it that way. Now I can say I want four items. If I want four items, then it equally spaces them at 90 degrees. What if I wanted 40 degrees or 45 degrees between each one? If I wanted 30 degrees between each one. You can have multiple rows. So it starts to space them out. You can have, you can have, you could, down here at this, on the command prompt, each one of these is the same as these up here. Before the ribbon came out, this was the only way you could access that data. So this information up here is the same as this. You can say, I wanted a fill angle. You can either click it down here, fill angle, and you can say 360. And you can see that it, it goes all the way around and notice that the fill angle is at the top. So that's what that means. This information in that ribbon is the same down here. You can even have a, a base point. You could change your base point to here. And notice what it did is it now shifted it where that base point is. Okay. Now, the last one that I want to show you, I'll go ahead and delete these, is I'm going to draw a polyline from here to here. Let me get this out of the way. And I draw a line here. Okay. Right now this line is a total length of, if I look at my properties palette, that length is 9.5 blah 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 blah. Okay. So I want to create a path array. Now I'm going to use my and I'm going to add and convert it to an arc. And actually I'm going to do it this way so you can see the path easier. I want to rotate this at a certain given distance, equally spaced. Okay. If I come over here to path array, I say this is the object select objects, that's the object that I want to array. Now I pick the curved path, that's the object I want to curve it with. Notice how it puts it nicely. It's doing it by the distance between. So I could say I want here two, and now the distance between each one of those items is two. If I said you can have a total of ten, now it's going items at 1.4, so if I still want, let's say I want a 1.5, I still have my items for one. I could say I want 10 items. still holding the 8 instead of going to 10. I'm having problems this morning with my... It takes a while. It really does. I don't know why, but it takes a while. But it should make that, and it should be the distance that I tell it between. This is really handy when you're laying out subdivisions, when you're laying out um, electromechanical objects that have to be a specific distance, pathed or gridded away. Okay? So it actually is a really cool command. I lay out, did it work this time? Yeah.
know, I was gonna say, if they want, like, they don't know the length of the arc, but they wanna space equally, they can go to measure and do divide, so it's gonna divide equally. So, measure and then divide. Yes, and it's gonna space equally, and you don't have to think of it. Yeah, the only plus of having it, it's, it's nice equally spaced, but most of us don't, we don't get that decision. Yeah. Unless it's something architecturally where they don't care about spaces, but you always have to remember somebody has to build it, and they're going to really not like 1.6739. It's not easy to measure. So they'll they want to stop at 1.6, and they'll fudge the last one to have it a little bit more at a distance. But yeah, extreme. this one's one of the, the um, once they set it up with the ribbons like that, it's a lot nicer. Okay. So play with that. We're, I'm only showing you in this class the very basics of it because if I show you every button, you're not you're not going to get the benefit of it. Use the the the, the basics and you will get um, more comfortable and be like, okay, I've got this down. Let me go to the let me see what else is on. All right. So we're going to stop here and go into the next modified command.